Hi there. You know, a little while ago, uh, I was over at Snow Walker Bushcraft YouTube channel uh, watching a video. And in the video, Brian had this ingenious way of moving your pot in and out of the fire, uh, you know, whenever you needed to check your stew or your coffee or, you know, maybe just wanted to pour yourself a cup of coffee. And so when, after I watched that, I was thinking, you know, how could I also do it so that I could move my pot kind of up and down easily because if you're like me uh, usually what happens is uh, my fire is either really low or I throw some wood on and next thing you know I got a raging inferno burning my stew boiling my coffee you know all over the place so I thought about it and this is what I came up with the super deluxe uh, base camp tripod setup so what we have here is right now my pot is down as low as it'll go. But let's say I gotta throw some more wood on the fire. What I can do is I can just move it up. And I can get it, you know, a little bit further away from the fire. And then I also have another level here too that I can get it away from the fire. Now you can this is easily adjustable while you're making it. You know, you can adjust the heights for what you need. Uh, and I also called it, you know, the base camp tripod because it actually took a lot of work to do this. So I don't really recommend, you know, you're just spending one night out there of going through all this trouble unless you're bored and, you know, you just want something to do. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll show you the features of this and then uh, I'll do a little close up and I'll come in and I'll show you how I actually put this thing together. So like I said, it's pretty easy. I can move this up and down. Yeah, then maybe I'll throw fires going out a little bit. You know, I got some hot cools there, but I need to put some more wood on there. And next thing you know, you know, my pot's sitting, resting right down on top of the wood. So what I can do is easily pick this up. And there you go. Now, um, you know, usually you have a pot hanger or whatever on here. And the problem is whenever you want to adjust it, you got to kind of pull this out of the fire to adjust the height of your pot. So now the other thing about this is, is I can take this out of the fire pretty easily. You can see, I just pulled it over, got it out of the fire where I can, you know, I can come in here now, I can reach my pot, I can stir my stew, I can just check my coffee to see how it's doing. And then boom, right back into the fire. And it works on all three of the levels I have in here. You know, I have it in the fire there. Switch it over there, I can check it out. You know, now I got like, uh, you know, I let the kids throw some wood in the fire, so now I got this raging fire going on in here, so I can put this at the top. I can still get it out of the fire. Now this is all gonna depend on, uh, you know, whatever heights that you want, so you have to kind of figure that out. And I'll explain that a little bit more when I show you uh, how to actually put this together. So I'm gonna go ahead and move the camera going to zoom them up close and show you how I uh, built these different levels on my tripod. All right, so now I want to show you uh, how I made that super deluxe uh, base camp tripod system. So the first thing I did was uh, on the side that was going to be uh, nearest to where I was going to be working from, uh, I put just basically a straight stick across the bottom of this because there's no reason to, you know, whittle out the hooks and things that I'm going to show you here in a minute for the first layer of this. So it's just a straight stick is all it is. And now the more complicated part was making different levels of this. Uh, I could have put a straight stick there, but then each time I would have had to pull my pot out. Oh, I had to do a lot of finagling to get it in and out of there. So instead what I did was I made some hooks and I just lashed them onto the sides of the tripod. So uh, what I'm really looking for basically are the kind of V's that you find in a tree where one side is straight and then the other side just kind of jets out from that. Now you can use this. As you can see, I have some of the stick above, have some of the stick below the V. But you can also really just worry about having uh, part of the stick below or even part of the stick above. Because I'm just going to be lashing this onto my uh, tripod pole. And when I do, see I don't have to worry about any of having anything here at the top because my tripod's there. Same way at the bottom, uh, you know, if this was up the other way, 
and I was just uh, lashing here at the top and you know my hook would come out this way it'd be the same thing I just really need part of this that's long enough that I'm able to get some good lashing on there and now as you saw I just kind of held that up on there and you know if you were in a hurry that is, you know, this this would save you a lot of time just lashing this on here. One of the things you have to watch is it kind of rolls on here. You know, even when I put some lashings on here and hold this down tight, it's still going to roll a little bit. So, and, and that was the first way that I made this. And then I thought about it, and what I did was I actually flattened this part off and flattened the part off of my tripod so that they actually fit together a little better. And that's just what, quickly here, I'm going to show you. So for my hook part, Really, the only thing I did was I looked at where, uh, you know, my angled part was coming out to make the hook, and then I just kind of tried to keep this flat across here, and basically I just flattened it off a little bit. Not too big of a deal. Uh, it may take some tweaking once you, uh, you know, start trying to put this together. You know, you may need to uh, trim on this side or this side, or maybe you got some bumps in there that aren't working out. But like I said, not too big of a deal to do this. Just flattened off the side uh, that's going to hook onto my tripod post. Then what I did was I came to my tripod post. I guess first I should tell you what I did was basically I put my tripod together before I did all of this so that I could measure these out and so that I could have a good placement for them because what I did next was I would mark this off here on my tripod post and then what I'm going to do is cut a little notch out of this so that, so that this hook is going to kind of set right in there a little flatter. Now you can use your knife for this. Uh, I have this little saw uh, which worked out pretty well for you know just getting it started and cutting a groove down in there. Like I said you'll have this you know this is your tripod so you'll have this together with your other two uh, sides of this while you're doing this because you also want these hooks to be on the right side of this tripod post uh, in comparison to uh, the other two legs of this and I'll show you because once I'm done showing you this I'm going to do a little close up a little around the tripod system here so that you can see it as it's all put together So, like I said, I just uh, cut this out, and it doesn't have to be this long. Really, what you want your hook is long enough that you're going to get some good lashings on there, and I'll show you two different ways that I use to, to lash these up, depending on how they fit together. You know, and you see, it didn't take a whole long time, but, you know, even on mine that I have three levels, uh, I ended up, I had to cut seven uh, hooks and seven notches into my tripod just to do that. And once you start, uh, you know, trying to get them to fit a little tighter together, uh, it takes a little bit of time to do this part of it. So here, just real quick, uh, I just flattened them off a little bit. You can see there's still some gap in there. Uh, I could go through and make these, you know, where they're really tight and flat against each other, but I don't think that's necessary, uh, and it's just a lot more time consuming. So, now one thing I'll do is I want to, uh, if you notice, this has a little uh, odd bump out of the side here. I'm just going to cut that part off here quick. Now, normally, uh, you know, I would have done that before I measured out to cut my notch in. But I also want to leave a little bit um, of a free end on my notch that I cut out. So this will actually uh, work out pretty well for that. So I'm going to have this up here. And you'll see now I have a little bit of a notch here. So I can either have cut this longer uh, or uh, I could just cut this off once I've done. This was pretty long anyways. But I want to have this so that I can actually pull my frappings up under there whenever I'm lashing this together. So like I said, there are two different ways that you could do this. You could do a traditional shear lashing, which is, uh, you know, kind of the tripod lashing. Like if you have two uh, sticks that you want to lash together that are parallel, uh, you'll use your shear lashing. Uh, I do have a video up on that if you want to uh, 
watch that if you're not sure about shear lashing. So that's what I'm going to do here first. So, uh, and I'm not going to go through uh, necessarily how to do this. Uh, like I said, I do have a separate video on this. So if you want to uh, watch how to do the shear lashing, if you want a little more uh, detail on that, uh, just go ahead and watch the other video in my knots uh, section. And you'll see the flatter that you make these two so that they fit together, um, the little easier they are to stay when you're trying to do this uh, by yourself. Uh, definitely if you've got a, you know, a companion that's out camping with you, uh, this would go a little easier if I had someone else to hold the one side of this while I was doing it. Especially, you know, if you're uh, doing this at a base camp, because you have some time to work on. It's not like you're you have to hurry to get this done. So here I am. I'm just doing some wraps around this. Now like I said, if you uh, want to do the shear lashing, what I'm going to have to do, and you can do this um, whenever you're carving this out, I can leave like uh, little uh, divots and you know a little gap in there so that I can do this a little better. Another thing you can do when you're doing this, uh, I'm just kind of putting my knife in there and lifting it up a little bit. Uh, could use my knife or a stick or something else, just to get that to get that under there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back around the other side. And you can see I have only holding one end on, so it's a little easier to get this side up. So there you go, uh, I have a couple good uh, wraps and fraps for a shear lashing on this end, but you'll find when you try to get to the other end it's a little harder because you actually have to feed it through to be able to do that. So well, on the other end here, I'll just show you what's called a round lashing, which doesn't really have any frappings on it, but I'll also show you a way that you can tighten that up too without the frappings. So now I would definitely recommend lashing this in two different places. Uh, if you just do one, you see that's pretty, you know, flops around pretty easily. Especially if you have a hot pot on there, you don't want to take any chances of this hook falling down in your pot, either falling in the fire or, you know, burning you, you know, spilling on you and burning you. So make sure you put at least two uh, lashings onto this. So what I'm going to do, uh, this is called a round lashing which is basically a lot of wraps around the wood without any frapping. So I'm starting it the same way as I would any lashing, you know, with a timber hitch or a clove hitch. And then basically I'm just going to come and I'm going to wrap on here. I'm going to pull this tight. And then I'm just going to finish it off with a clove hitch. And as you can see, you know, now I have my two lashings on here. So this is a lot stronger and a lot sturdier. But since I didn't have any frappings on here, if I wanted to make this even tighter, so what I did was basically I just carved out a little wedge and I can take it and I can stick it between the two here. And if I need to, uh, you know, I could find something I can pound it down, but this is actually going in pretty easily here. Uh, but like I said, you know, if I wanted, if I had uh, my axe, I could tap on the back of this uh, or a rock or a bigger stick or something. But you see, basically I put that in there and that really tightened this up, even though I didn't have any uh, frappings on this side. So there you go. Like I said, I put mine together and then uh, that way I could see where I wanted to put these hooks. Uh, you can have your hooks butting right up against each other. You know, you might even find a branch that has... Uh, two coming out of it, you can use that for two different levels. Now one thing you have to watch is, and the reason I put mine together first, was because when you get angled out on your tripod, your hooks aren't going to be straight across as if they were here. So I put it out and uh, had my crossbeam stick going and everything so that I could test it out where I needed these to be. 
Now I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to move the camera, I'm going to show you how this looks, you know, do a little round about it. So. Alright, so here we are. I'll give you a little close-up of the tripod system. All right, there you have it, the Super Deluxe Base Camp Tripod System that lets you not only move your pot out of the fire, it also lets you raise and lower it depending on the height of your fire. Uh, make sure you check out Snowwalker Bushcraft for Brian's original video. Uh, that was the inspiration for this, and have a great day.